Welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction lyrical one shot. This one shot is dedicated to Yukiu43. I hope I pronounced that correctly. She requested a lyrical one shot on the song Right Here Waiting by Richard Marx. So, I hope you enjoy it. If there is any one shots you want me to try, any songs, um, comment down below. Smash that like button, please. And make sure you subscribe for more one shots and series. Enjoy. Right here waiting. Marinette's POV. Marinette tried to slide through the living room door, making her way to her bedroom before her mum unnoticed. She had considered using her window on occasion, but now that Hop Moth was defeated, the sighting of Ladybug would be noticed all the more. Marinette? Hey, I'm just going to my room. I've got a mountain of schoolwork. Which wasn't a lie. Are you alright, my sweetheart? Marinette forced a smile. She had spent so many hours in her mama's arms, crying in the past months, causing her to worry about her daughter. No. She needed to put on a smile, even if she didn't feel it. She caught Sabine's studying gaze and smiled. There's a letter waiting for you. Sabine's gaze softened as she watched the false smile turn into a genuine one. Thanks! Marinette searched the table next to the front door and saw Adrian's elegant handwriting staring back at her. Marinette clutched it against her heart and ran up her bedroom stairs, causing her to stumble twice. The past four months had been a whirlwind. First, disclosing their secret identities to one another after a near miss with a kumatized victim and needing Shat but couldn't get hold of him. But once she had learned that Shat was Adrian, Ladybug couldn't stop herself from spilling out her heart to him, including that of who she truly was. Soon after, their fear became a reality as Hawkmoth made his move against them. In the end, good triumphed over evil. But it also meant that Adrian's world fell apart as they learnt Hawkmoth's identity. She had held him so tight in her arms that night and into the following day, cementing their love into their hearts. His aunt thought it best if Adrian came to live with her and Felix in London. At the train, they vowed to stay true to one another. I'll, I'll be right here waiting for you, Marinette breathed into his ear, tears soaking into his hoodie as she could barely breathe because of his tight hold on her and the pain tearing through her entire body. I'll write to you, like they do in the old movies. Adrian promised. Marinette let the hatch crash against the frame as she quickly tore open the envelope. My dearest princess, oh how much I miss you. Oceans apart day after day and slowly go insane. I hear your voice on the phone but it doesn't stop the pain. If I see you next to never, how can we stay forever? But you know my heart, you are my heart, and that love will stay true. Promise me you'll stay right there and wait for me, no matter how long it takes for me to return to you. Yours, forever and a day, I love you. Adrian. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Marinette's face was wet with tears, as if she had just stood in a rainfall without an umbrella to protect her. They spoke to each other every day, either on the phone or FaceTime, but they never discussed the words in the letters. They were for the words they couldn't say to their faces, not able to witness the pain of distance and loss. Marinette rushed to her desk and pulled out a pink heart card. My prince, wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you. Whatever it takes, or oh, how my heart breaks, I will be right here, waiting for you. You are my prince, my kitty. I promise you, 
There has only been one person who lives in my heart, no matter the distance across the sea. There will only ever be you. However long it takes, I will be right here waiting for you to come back to me. Yours, forever and a day. I love you, Marinette. Kiss, kiss, kiss. She sealed the envelope with a kiss and rushed back down the stairs and headed to the post box on the corner, hoping to make it before the collection. Instead of heading back up to her room where a mountain of essays was waiting to be written and the deadline of tomorrow hung over her, Marinette ambled into the park and sank onto a bench. She pulled up her sleeve and wiped away the last of the tears from her face. She felt a phone buzz in her purse and saw Titi smiling up at her, knowing they'll have a heart-to-heart tonight. It was Adrian on FaceTime, as if he knew. She took a deep breath before answering. Hello, my princess. His beautiful wide grin fell away to concern. Hello, my prince. She tried to use a cheery voice, but knew the sorrow was breaking through. Seeing him, but not being able to reach out and touch him seemed like a cruel joke. She was no longer crying, but guessed her eyes were red and puffy. Are you alright, my love? His voice was soft and tender, causing her fragile wall to crack. Marinette nodded and placed him a smile. Their rule meant she couldn't say what had caused the tears, but he knew. She took a long, deep breath. Knowing he shared the same pain actually helped. Knowing she wasn't alone in this. So, tell me about your day. She smiled. This won't last. Soon he returned to her. Well, a group of us broke out of the school at lunchtime and they forced me to try chips and gravy from their favourite chippy a mile down the road. Adrian pulled a face that made her heart lighter as a small chuckle broke through. It was strange and stodgy. I don't know how they could like it. I still can't get used to some of the British food. I won't even put cheese on it. You can only imagine you know whose face when I told him. He almost catalyzed the school. Adrian burst out laughing and muttered something to the left of him, guessing Plag was there, protesting, even though she couldn't see him. Oh, how she wished she could bop him on his wrinkled, crinkled nose at that moment. She had tried it once and ended up cancelling the call. What are you up to? It was the fact that he was happy talking about the everyday so that he could imagine being there with her. I have a stack loads of homework to do. Me too. Study buddies? He did his little eyebrow wiggle that showed off his inner chat. She couldn't believe that they were the same person sometimes. How she thought it was cute before but now it seemed adorable. Always. He FaceTimed all night as Marinette leant the phone against the lamp. Sometimes they would talk, bounce ideas off one another. Other times they remained silent knowing that they were right there. Occasionally they had fallen asleep still FaceTiming as she cuddled into a pillow that still had a hint of his scent. It was another two days before Marinette got a reply to her letter. She bounded through the door during lunch break and saw it waiting for her. My dearest princess, your words mean the world to me and I can't believe I took for granted all the times that I thought would last somehow. I hear your laughter, I taste the tears but I can't get near to you now. Oh, can't you see it, baby? You've got me going crazy. I find myself daydreaming in class of those stolen moments we had together, curled up in each other's arms, laughing at the times I chased after you, not knowing who you really were, finding myself torn between two women as they became one in front of me, how you longed for me and rejected at me at once, Oh, how foolish we were to take for granted that time we had together. The chance to hold you near. And now, all I want in the world is to be there with you and whisper words of love into your ear. Promise me you'll stay right there and wait for me. No matter how long it takes for me to return to you. Yours, forever and a day. I love you, Adrian. Kiss, kiss, kiss. 
Marinette chuckled at the memories of Shat declaring his love for her, only for her to reject him and crave his other half. How he would love Ladybug and then drew close to herself as Marinette. She wished she had taken pictures of their faces when they revealed their identities to one another and the relief in form of a laugh. The world had fated them together. She had to believe it, hold on to it, that their love will stay strong and true. My dear prince, wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you, whatever it takes or how my heart breaks, I will be right here waiting for you. I wonder how we can survive this romance, but in the end, if I'm with you, I'll take the chance that we are once more floating in front of the moon as you hold me close, knowing that I loved you as we danced. Oh. Can't you see it, baby? You've got me going crazy. However long it takes, I will be right here waiting for you to come back to me. Yours, forever and a day. I love you, Marinette. Kiss, kiss, kiss. She smiled at the memory of them dancing in New York and how he had looked at her then, and yet still declaring friendship. What a difference a year can make. Marinette dropped off the card into the post box before sprinting back into class and seeing the seat next to Nino that was still void of his occupant. Ali had took turns jumping from one seat to the other, making sure that the two most important people to her weren't alone. The next 24 hours passed now like all the others. Paris had settled into a new normal that resembled the old ways with a hint of caution. Life was a blend of school, bakery and designs with endless coals thrown in. After school, she and Adrian had the usual FaceTime session, talking about everything and nothing as he studied and she sketched. And yet once it had turned dark outside, he needed to end the call as he had something urgent to do. What could be more urgent than talking to me? She had teased him, pulling a silly pouty face but couldn't hold it for long. You'll see. I love you. He ended the call. After another two hours, deep in focus on a design she had agreed to make for kitty sections next to music video. A stillness had descended over the bakery along with the rest of Paris. She didn't believe the noise at first, her mind playing tricks at the sound of knocking from her balcony window. Maybe she needed to head to bed, exhaustion playing mind games on her again. She placed down a tablet and pen, and as she went to turn off the light, she heard it again, but this time louder. He can't be. He's not here. Did her heart miss him that much? It was creating scenarios in her head. As the room went dark, apart from the nightlight above her bed, she saw him at the window, grinning at her. No, it's not possible. She dashed up the ladder to a mezzanine and unlocked the window, her mouth open as she watched her kitty in his astro suit climb through. She hadn't noticed the tears soaking her face until he began wiping them away. Adrian, how? Why? Her voice was barely audible. Claws in, he said through a grin. Clag zoomed out and dashed off to greet the rest of his quarry friends as Adrian and Marinette embraced each other in their arms. The kiss felt like it was a dream, one she hoped she would never wake from. After a while, they released each other, breathless, as Adrian pulled out a piece of pink card from his back pocket and held it to his heart. A loving, soft smile washed over his face. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you. Whatever it takes, or how my heart breaks. He repeated her line, stroking the back of her hand as he held it gently in his. I'll be right here waiting for you. Forever and a day. I will wait for you. She leaned in closer, brushing their lips in a light kiss. Even if it could only last a few hours, the moment was perfect. and knew they could wait a lifetime. Their love 
was fated in the stars after all. Thank you for listening right here waiting. I hope you enjoyed this lyrical one shot. Um, if you have any recommendations or requests, make sure you put them in the comments below and I will do my best. I seem to be rhyming at the moment. Um, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe for all the others and the ones to come and I will see you soon. Bye.